today we are taking one episode break from our series on the bible to do a special broadcast we will return back to our series on the story of the old bible by god's grace next episode no doubt you have heard the news it is all over our mainstream and social media i speak about the horrific powerful earthquake that struck southern and central turkey and northern and western syria in the early hours of monday morning on the 6th of february around 4:17 in the morning the tremor lasted just about 1 to 2 minutes obviously after that there were aftershocks over 6000 buildings have been reported destroyed many occupied by sleeping residents at least 24 million are affected at least 1.3 million are reported to be displaced and over 25000 people now reported dead families friends local and international rescue teams have been working tirelessly to rescue people trapped under the rubbles there have been series of dramatic and miraculous rescue of the young the old even group of people our prayers are with the nations of turkey and syria with the families and friends of the missing and the dead may god grant all affected hope strength and comfort in try in time of great tragedy and disaster like this turkey lies on the boundary between two tectonic plates which makes the country highly susceptible to earthquakes there have been several significant earthquakes in turkey in recent years 1999 2003 2010 2011 2020 all of which resulted in substantial loss of life property and a lot of damages it is essential that country like turkey that are highly susceptible to earthquakes be prepared for a potential seismic event these measures will reduce the risk of damage to property and loss of life such measure includes ensuring that structures are retrofitted or built to improve their resistance to earthquakes there must be extensive early warning system in place that can dictate earthquakes and provide advanced warning to residents homes and businesses must be trained and prepared for emergency for example like having emergency kit on hand and be aware of the location of safe zones and evacuation routes in the event of an earthquake however in this particular horrific incident what makes it even more devastating was that it happened when locals were still asleep once again our prayers are with the nations and the people of turkey and syria inevitably a disaster of this magnitude raises questions about god his existence his love his goodness question like but where is God when all this happened? If God is all powerful, all loving, if God is good, why did he not stop the earthquake? Does he care? The subject of what or how or why of sufferings is difficult and complex. Both secular and religious thinkers down the age have struggled to find satisfying answers to these questions. I will not pretend to have all the answers but would like to reflect on the question of God humans and suffering I just want to reflect on 12 points number one sufferings and disasters are reality of life on earth we just have to look around us we just have to look at the history of human even when God became a man the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 that he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. Number two, the heaven 
and the earth that God created in the beginning was very good. God did not create human to suffer and he did not create the earth for disaster. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 tells us that God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Number 3 Thought and Reflections Sufferings and disasters enter into and is propagated in the creation when human rebelled and continue to rebel against their creator. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 tells us that by man came death. Reflection number 4. No one group of people have divine humanity from sufferings and disasters on earth, not even Christians. John chapter 16 verse 33, the Lord Jesus said, In the world you will have tribulation. Number five, the fact that someone or a group of people suffer disaster does not necessarily mean that they are peculiarly evil and are being judged for their individual sins. As if the rest of us that somehow escape such disaster did so on our own merit. Luke chapter 13 verses 4 and 5, the Lord Jesus was mentioning an incident in Siloam. He said, those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think you that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you nay. Reflection number 6. A significant percentage of sufferings human experience today are caused either directly or indirectly or either in short term or long term by humans selfishness, corruptions and evil. Over 50% of global suffering will end overnight if we love each other, if we love people of different gender, people of different race. People of, people of different class, people of different nation, and so on, if we love them as we love ourselves. You and I know that will not happen until the millennial reign of Christ on earth. Matthew 22, verses 38 to 40. The Lord Jesus said, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. Reflection number seven. God is still good today as he was in the past. But as a race, humans have rejected his love and goodness and embraced evil and wickedness. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Reflection number 8. The fact is, it is the goodness of God that is restraining the flood of evil and wickedness of men. It is terrifying to think that things could be worse. Second Thessalonians 2.7 tells us that the secret power of evil is already working in the world now. But there is one who is stopping that secret power of evil. And he will continue to stop it until he is taken out of the way. Number 9. As we have more people open their heart to God and allow him to be the master of their life, we will have more salt and more light in the world. Matthew 5, 13 to 14 said, You are the salt of the earth. 14 says that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Reflection 10. God promised to be with his people when they pass through disasters and sufferings to help them, to strengthen them. The psalmist said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Ye do I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Reflection number 11. Just like at the beginning, so it will be in the end, God will create a new heaven and a new earth where there will be no more sufferings, 
where there will be no more evil, where there will be no more disaster. Revelation 27 verses 4 to 5 And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And final reflection number 12. Only those who while on earth opened their soul to God and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will be a member of that new civilization in the new earth. Revelation chapter 12 verses 12 to 15. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and that they may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and warmongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and make it a lie. Once again, our prayers are with the people of Turkey and Syria. And that in this great time of tragedy, we will all come to know the love of God and the goodness of God that is reaching out to us and indeed to the world. God bless you. Shalom. Bye.